had to start this episode off with a bang. I really had to because that's how my wife and I felt when we got to Bimini. Things totally changed. We realized that we brought the right boat. We left the Via home, we brought the cat, and here's why. The Bahamas are a huge place, and there's nothing like traveling across the water in triple digits to go from island to island to find one adventure after the next. And this is how it all turned out. I welcome everybody to one hell of an epic adventure from How to Live, The Bahamas, episode number two. So where did we leave off that last episode? Oh yeah, it was the really sucky crossing from Miami to Bimini. It was standing fives to sixes, and it was horrible. It was horrible for everybody. If you were in a V or a cat, a big boat, small boat, it didn't matter. It sucked. So we're going to start the episode there, and then we're going to stop playing prevent defense and start having a good time. Is this, is this worth it? Is this smart? Well, I'd like to be able to show everybody the full craziness of that crossing. In all reality, we didn't film most of it. The reason is it became so dangerous for us to film and boat at the same time. None of the GoPro mounts would actually stay in place. It just wasn't worth it. So we apologize for that. But you know what? This episode isn't about that crossing. It's about the adventure once we got there and it all paid off. So I'm okay with that. Let's move on. Coming into Bimini, we have two miles left. We're finally able to... crossing right there with a 39 foot MTI we owe Randy, Milton and the crew, PNT Marine, a huge bit of thank you. In every single adventure you have high points, this is certainly one of them. Rolling into Bimini safe and sound after that was definitely a high point. Alright, what Sarah's doing now, she's getting our flag. We have to fly a flag uh, for quarantine. And just like that, this adventure changed gear. We went from crazy are we actually going to get there to crazy logistics and make sure our flags out, make sure we have all of our paperwork ready so we don't get in trouble with customs and integration at Bimini. So I have to be honest with you. I do want to educate everybody on what to do, what exactly to do when you get into Bimini so you don't get in trouble with customs. But to tell you the truth, I don't actually know because I would totally screw that up big time. I leave that to my wife. She's the linguistic queen and it just works out better that way. So maybe I'll have her actually talk about it in the video and she can tell us how the hell she pulled it off. And did you catch that? Cause my wife certainly did. She's not the linguistics queen. She's the logistics queen. Keeping it real. With the first 39 cat outboard MTI to actually be in Bimini, we did the trip and we didn't do it when it was glass. I actually learned a lot too. We learned how to trim it a bit better. Um, and most of it was four to five footers for 50 miles, like doing all over inlet for 50 miles. But we're here, super happy. We got our flag rolling. You know, in every episode, I have moments where I'm like, do I put this clip in or not? And from day one, I've said, we're gonna keep it as real as possible. And as a husband and wife adventure couple, there's moments in the boat that you have conversations and it's real and that's what we wanna bring. We don't wanna just fluff everything up to be like perfect because it's just not. An adventure is about ups and downs. And so in risking, you know, us not, you know, being the, you know, the perfect adventure couple, we hear that. This is a conversation about me just not being a good captain on the way over, but you live and you learn. And luckily I have an incredible wife that's willing to look past some of my faults as a captain. So my wife was so good. I was such a brat. Now we weren't recording this because it was too rough. The camera was falling off. The we, we just had to control the boat. It was ugly. So we stopped recording and good thing because I was a big baby. All the all the bigger V's, we all stayed together. We were all doing like 30 to 40 miles an hour. It's just what you're gonna do unless you wanna get air and kill your boat. Or your um, passengers. Yeah. And at <laughs> the end, it laid down to like a three foot seat. We were able to get on top of it and just rip on it, but. Thanks, honey, for being such a good wife because I was a big bitch. Guys, <laughs> uh, this is Steve. Uh, just checking in with all boats. Listen, we're going to have 
And as soon as that conversation is about over, Stu is on the radio to help us out, get us through customs and immigration. And um, they do an awesome job. They're going to educate you and make sure you do it right and make sure you do it safely. So if you have the ability to sign up for one of these events, definitely do it with the FPC. When you come to Bimini, you just don't show up. You can't, you'll be in deep shit. It's, there's, it's a different country. So there are certain protocols that you have to go through and learn. Let's go port side, hon. We're gonna go right behind Stu. Um, but there's certain protocols that you have to go through because this is a different country. And there are two separate things. It's immigration um, and customs. It's two different entities. So you, hide, you, you, you raise this flag that says that you haven't been through immigration yet. And then once you go through this, you take this flag down and then you put in your cruise flag, which comes from, help me, I need immigration, I don't know. So I'm, I'm uh, trying to dock the boat here in Mary at the same time. You know, it looks pretty simple, but this was actually one of my most fun moments, touching Bimini for the first time, rolling up to a new dock, new water, new people, not knowing what to do. I mean, it really is what an adventure is all about. All right, so here it is. It's really good to have a first mate that knows what she's doing. It gives me a chance to film. We don't have a film crew. All right, so this is it. This is Bimini. We're Bimini. We're tying up right now. This is Stu. He runs the FPC and the Cigarette 1080. And right now we're just tying up at the dock and we're just getting situated to do customs and to do immigration. Two separate things you got to do here. Well, because I didn't want to bring a camera into Bimini Customs and Immigration, this is all I have on this process. All right, so now we're walking up to basically customs and immigration. We're going to do some paperwork. This is the paperwork. My wife put together everything for me and it's only one person. You can't, everybody else has to stay back at the boat. So it's basically just the captains of the boat. Stu's right here, he's walking up, he's got his paperwork for all of his people. I will recommend though, do all your paperwork beforehand because you're gonna get processed way quicker. And before you know it, we are at our Bimini Hotel, checking it out, relaxing, scratching our heads, going how the heck did we get here? And what do we do now? And after a five second power nap, it's time to roll. This is the Bahamas, this is Bimini. This is, look at this. This is Bimini, we're gonna go out here, we're gonna check it out. This is Bimini right here. I'm so happy Sarah cried. I cried on the inside. <laughs> I talked to the dealer several times. I spent a lot of time in prayer. It was probably a, probably a pretty shallow prayer, pun intended. So I come in here to take a shower and I'm like, what the heck, dude, that's cool. We get an outside shade. Oh, no, it's to the bedroom. It's the window to the bedroom. Honey, I didn't know we were staying in Vegas. That's pretty cool. Does the, bed, does the bed vibrate too with mirrors in the ceiling? I assume this room wasn't designed for people that are like in their 80s. Honey, you want to take a shower? Can you open that up? <laughs> All right, first on the agenda, well, besides using the shower with a window, is to get food. We're hungry. So we go out and eat. And the only reason why I'm putting this in here is because the Hilton on the Bimini is a fantastic hotel. It really is to me four or five star and the, the food was great the setting was great and so here it is so you might be wondering where is everybody and it's not because of corona this is actually after corona it's because i woke up super early to get the sunrise and i think everybody well they were probably still sleeping off the night before or the tough ride over I couldn't help but try to get our first sunrise here at Bimini on a drone time lapse. While this hotel is awesome, we didn't come here to just hang out in a hotel. We came here to find new adventures we'd never see anywhere else in the world. And the first one are the giant stingrays. And they are found just past this mysterious shipwreck called the Sapona and or the concrete ship. So after lunch, we head south. We head south 13.3 miles to this place called Honeymoon Harbor, which has a lot of big rays and some big nurse sharks. And some people feed them, we didn't, we just swam with them. It was a little bit overcast for the clouds, which made it a little bit more gray. But man, it was just magical to swim with creatures this big. So I think it's time for me to be quiet and maybe try to just share the experience like you were there. Thank you. 
That's what it was like. That's how it felt. It was pretty magical. One of the cool things that we noticed is it looked like these rays had a family structure. Now, whether or not these rays were actually related, I don't know. But almost every single ray pod had two big adults and these little ones just following behind them. And it really looked like a family to me. Um, and yeah, it really did feel that magical. If you do make it to Bimini, this is a must stop. Honeymoon Harbor with the big rays and sharks. Well, I want to answer a couple questions. A lot of people have asked, how do you guys do all your shooting, your camera work? And the reality is we just do it. Just ask me and my wife. And we do have a bunch of cameras from GoPros, uh, two drones and cell phones, um, but we just do it. We just film it ourselves and put it all together. And here we are landing a drone on, a, on the boat, which can be tricky sometimes, but it definitely does add a little bit of excitement and complexity to the trip which can kind of probably wear on my wife a little bit, I think, when she just wants to relax. Did you just find your favorite spot for the day? Yes. Bean bags against the windshield. All right, before we get to the next segment of the episode where I introduce our best boating friends and we get quite a laugh, I want to thank everybody for watching our channel and for supporting it. I know everybody says that and I know it's cliche, but I just don't care because it's true. We really, really thank you guys. At the end of the day, we do it to promote a theme. And that theme is, how do you live? And do you live every day off the couch? Like every day is your last, and it's your last adventure on earth. Well, every once in a while, you meet somebody you felt like you've known forever, and the Locklears are those people for me and Sarah. Um, these guys are our boating buddies. We go everywhere together. And this next morning was our first morning in Bimini. And we decided to go out for breakfast and we had an absolute blast. Robbie, where are you going with my wife? Oh, my wife is, my wife is being kidnapped. You give him an inch, he takes a a mile. The one chance I you know he's kidnapping my wife. Oh. Um, what side of the road are you supposed to be on, Rob? It's a British island, isn't it? Wait, that is very true. I just realized that. You're very comfortable with this weirdness. <laughs> Honey, you didn't run like you meant it. So this was definitely a highlight of the Bimini trip. If you get a chance, rent a car. It's only one road or maybe two roads, but it's just cool to explore an, an island like this. It's just so little, so quaint. Uh, we went to the end of the road, literally. It's our first uh, real morning in the Bahamas. Um, we're going out to breakfast. We have a golf cart. It's not a very big island, um, but a golf cart's nice. And we're just gonna go try to find a local breakfast, not something at the hotel, which I'm excited about something a little bit more local um, and out of the way, which is what honestly H2L is about. It's about kind of getting out of the beat path and doing something different. I just love exploring. I love seeing new places and this was just a cool little golf cart trip. We went straight to the end of the island to check out what was down there, and then we were going to bounce back and get breakfast. 
the south though, wouldn't it? Is this technically, uh, Rob, the end of the road? This is, this is the end of the road, yes. After a quick exploration of the end of the island, we decided to head back and get some much needed grub at the Big Game Club, which is a marina about one third up on the inside of the island. Sometimes I debate whether or not to put in a lunch or a, or a breakfast because you know, like who really cares? But we are gonna put one in here because this place is cool and it's a very good place to eat. So if you're in Bimini for the morning, you definitely wanna check out the Big Game Club for breakfast, at least. So I'm all about the new environmental straws, but like, let's make them look a little bit more normal so I don't have to do a sniff check to make sure, well, I'll let you do the math. <laughs> My friends are disgusted with me after that one. Won't be the first, won't be the last. Anyways, where was I? I am thoroughly distracted here. Okay, yes, we are on the next mission, the next adventure, and that is the concrete ship, the Sapona. See, this is what happens when you have ADHD. I totally screwed up. The concrete ship is not next. Bimini bread is next. You can't come to Bimini without getting Bimini bread. Right? I know these videos are supposed to be primarily about like adrenaline and speed, but every once in a while, you need to get the culture in there. So there's your Bimini bread. And my wife is a carb queen. She loves her bread. So, hey, happy wife, happy life. I know every single one of you butters has that one friend that'll wait for you to be doing nothing or not paying attention to rip by you. Yep, this is Rob to me. But I can't blame him because I do the same thing to him. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is why we brought our 135 mile an hour cats. Before you know it, we are off to see the Sapona, the concrete ship, which is about, well, about 10 miles south of Bimini. I think we probably did it in record time. So I'm old, or I would say older now, older. And so I'm not gonna do that, which is one level above this, which is two levels above that. So I'm just gonna do the, the grandpa level. Sapona is a cargo ship that ran aground in 1926 during a hurricane. But what's interesting about it is that it was made out of concrete. You can see that it had a steel skin on the outside and a steel skin on the inside, but then it was filled with concrete and that's what's remaining. Most of the steel is actually gone. What's left is basically rebar reinforced concrete. And it's pretty amazing. The Sapona is also a fantastic dive site. The visibility is great and it's about basically 20 to 30 feet, so it's not super deep. And the wildlife is also very abundant. Through years of diving and free diving, I've actually never swam with a sea turtle before. This was a huge moment for me. This was a check mark on my bucket list. I just swam with him. He turned his back to me because maybe he wanted to protect himself a little bit. You know, that's what they do to tiger sharks, but we swam together for a while and it was just fascinating. I would recommend going there early in the morning or in the evening because during the day when we were there, it was pretty packed. A lot of people dive and jump off the Sapona. We did too, and it's a lot of fun. I would just say, be careful. It's a pretty gnarly shipwreck. Well, that wraps up episode number two from the How to Live Bahamas trip. And all I have to say is thank you guys so much. Somehow, the first episode got three million hits within a week on Facebook. And that just blows my mind. So thank you guys so much. Go to the Facebook store for swag. We don't make any money on it. We break even. We just want to promote living life as an adventure. And that's how we live. Episode number three has some of the most epic footage of the whole trip. We can't wait to put that together for you guys. Stay tuned. 
Boat safe, boat happy, over and out.